the, the project that I've been working on while I've been here at NYU Abu Dhabi uh, really emerged uh, as a, a sort of side interest out of my first book, uh, Imperial Mecca, which was published with Columbia University Press uh, in October of this year. Um, while I was working in the Ottoman archives um, many years ago, uh, I ended up finding uh, a good deal of, of information about early desalination machines uh, in the Red Sea. And out of that interest, I published a few articles uh, which have tracked uh, the growth of desalination technology uh, in the Ottoman Empire, uh, in the British Empire in the 19th and early 20th centuries, uh, but then later uh, reincarnations uh, with uh, American development assistance, uh, but then individual trajectories uh, in a variety of Arabian Peninsula uh, nations, most notably Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and now I've been working uh, quite a bit since I've been here on the United Arab Emirates. The research that I've been working on here uh, ultimately is geared toward a second monograph uh, project, which I'm tentatively calling something like fossil fueled and filtered uh, histories of desalination technology, uh, uh, fossil fuels and climate change in the Arabian Peninsula. So the idea of, of this project uh, is to really trace uh, the growth of man-made or produced water in the Arabian Peninsula. Um, really sort of trying to understand how uh, population growth, development, infrastructure growth uh, is, of course, we know uh, the development of the oil industry sort of makes the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, but uh, at this point, I think that's not a sufficient answer uh, for sort of thinking about the modern Gulf. So I wanted to sort of take the other side of the equation and really think about how fossil fuels, first coal and steam, and then later uh, uh, petroleum, and you know, eventually now other kinds of green technologies or even uh, nuclear technology uh, have allowed the Arabian Peninsula to grow well beyond uh, its normal uh, water resources, uh, not being able to move around. I think there are sort of two pieces of the project that I've focused a lot of attention on. Um, so the first uh, is sort of thinking again more locally. Um, I've been trying to work on an article, which I think will be a book chapter as well, on kind of the arrival of desalination technology here in Abu Dhabi. Um, and so I set out to sort of look at uh, newspaper clippings, uh, British colonial documents, but I think the key thing was really looking at collections of uh, memoirs of individuals uh, whose lives, usually these were interviews that were collected in the 1980s or 1990s um, and published in a variety of collections or, or books. Um, but these individuals would talk about their experiences uh, prior to the coming of oil and development to Abu Dhabi. And so one of the things that I've tried to do is trace what the landscape of water looked like before desalination technology. Uh, and so kind of initial conclusion is to think about that landscape as a kind of uh, umbilical cord, uh, if you will, thinking about Abu Dhabi as a very water poor environment and basically seasonally inhabited. Uh, another project that I've been working on is a kind of um, uh, almost a biography of uh, the son of the assassinated King Faisal in Saudi Arabia, so Saudi Arabia, uh, Mohammed bin Faisal al Saud. Um, and this character, he, he, he's quite interesting for me because uh, my home institution is Iowa State University, and he strangely ends up there in the late 1970s. Uh, Iowa State hosted a conference to think about uh, towing icebergs from Antarctica to Saudi Arabia, obviously with funding coming from this uh, Saudi prince. Um, and he had, from the 1960s through the 1970s, been the head of the Saline Water Conversion Corporation and really had been instrumental in bringing uh, desalination technology and popularizing it uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia. But as a sort of alternative plan, he started to think about uh, the possibility of towing uh, icebergs to Saudi Arabia. Now, this never comes to fruition, but just the sort of uh, the futuristic thinking uh, of this character and sort of his role uh, in uh, development projects and kind of wild uh, sci-fi thinking in the Arabian Peninsula um, has kind of allowed me to sort of think about wh where does uh, this sort of lineage uh, of this uh, kind of hyper-modernism that we see in places like 
Abu Dhabi and Dubai, where does this come from? And I think we've got a sort of longer story to tell. Um, so one of the things that I'm hoping to do is to really think about someone like Mohammed bin Faisal is sort of the original character uh, that, you know, the, the end of that lineage looks like some of the projects like Mustar City here in Abu Dhabi, uh, but then also Expo 2020 uh, in Dubai. So it's really trying to kind of uh, weave in this story of Gulf futurism and in infrastructure development in a kind of longer, uh, longer term story. Given the constraints of, uh, of the pandemic, there were certain both library resources and travel resources that, that weren't possible. But one of the things that the fellowship allowed me to do was to have time to sort of plot out uh, a big career pivot um, and this played out, I think, in two different ways. One, I was able to promote my first book uh, maybe more easily than I would have otherwise. Um, and this manifested itself in a very uh, sort of ambitious uh, schedule of appearances. And some of these were um, NYU Abu Dhabi connected, um, uh, but you know, uh, a, a broader sort of slate uh, of appearances. So I ended up making uh, over 15 invited talk, conference, and interviews um throughout the fellowship period and this meant engagement uh with places like university of virginia uh oxford uh singwa in beijing georgetown qatar jawaharlal nehru university in india uh, of course my partners at mcgill university in canada uh, of course several talks here at nyu abu dhabi a guest lecture at uh, ludwig maximilian university in munich um and then uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing another guest lecture here at NYU Abu Dhabi uh, with William Zimmerly's uh, course, where I'll be talking about uh, my desalination projects and their relationship uh, with, with Abu Dhabi itself. Because I wasn't able to spend uh, funds to, to travel as extensively as I would have liked, um, I was able to reach agreements uh, with uh, both a Turkish uh, and Arabic language uh, publisher to do translations. Of Imperial Mecca. So we've struck uh, uh, contracts with Arab scientific publishers based out of Beirut for an Arabic translation coming out in sometime in the fall of 2021, uh, and with Telemak uh, Kitab in Istanbul uh, for Turkish translation also in fall 2021. So I think that this is just a really uh, kind of remarkable outcome uh, for me career wise to be able to get my research out into uh, the local languages. Um, and be able to engage uh, really at that level.